Reaction quotient Q is K not at equilibrium. By calculating the Q, you are able to predict if it's product favor, reactant favor, or at equilibrium. When Q is greater than K, the equilibrium constant, there's too much product, so the reaction will shift towards the reactants. When Q is equal to K, it is at equilibrium and no shift will be required. When Q is less than K, there's too much reactants and it shifts to the products. Calculating for reaction quotient, equilibrium is written the same way as we do for Kc, except for we write it as Q, and it's equal to the products in brackets to some power, which is the coefficient of the balance equation, divided by brackets reactants to some power y. We still do not include solids and liquids because their concentration does not change. Calculation is done the same way as equilibrium, except for there will be no ice table. When you have quotient problems, all the concentration for both the products and the reactants will be provided. After you complete your calculations, compare the Q with the K to determine which way it will shift. In this first problem, there is 1.00 moles of CH4, 1.00 moles of CS2, 2.00 moles of H2S, and 2.00 moles of H2 are mixed in a 250 milliliter vessel at 960 degrees Celsius. Kc for the experiment is given as 0 0.036. In which direction will the reaction proceed to reach equilibrium? So we know this is a reaction quotient problem because they want you to determine which way the reaction will shift. Number two, in general, if all the concentration for both the products and reactants are provided, it's usually a Q problem. So we're going to start off the same way. We're going to write reaction quotient expression, products over reactant. This is going to be CS2 to the first power, H2 to the fourth power, CH4 to the first power, and H2S second power. All the states of matter are gas but we don't want to use um, Kp or Qp because none of the units are provided in gas units, which is atm, kilopascals, tors, or millimeters of mercury. So we need to use Q for our concentration. The volume provided here was 250 milliliter, which needs to be converted into liters to have proper SI units for molarity. Diagonal unit will be milliliter, liters, there's one liter in a thousand milliliter. So this becomes 0 0.250 liter. Now we're going to plug in. So there's 1.0 moles over 0 0.250 liters. H2, for H2, there are 2.00 moles per 0 0.250 liters. That needs to be to the fourth power. Over CH4, there is 1 mole over 0 0.250 liters. And then for H2S, there are 2 moles. 2 moles per 0 0.250 liters to the second power. I'm going to simplify by crossing things out. This concentration and this concentration is exactly the same, so they cancel out. The concentration on top, the concentration on the bottom are the same. This is the, to the fourth power, the denominator is to the second power, so this just becomes 2.00 moles over 0 0.250 liters to the second power. To calculate the math, you get 64. There are three sig figs. These all have three decimal significant digits. Three here, three here, three here. And my volume is also three because there's a decimal significant digit. So I have two. I need to add one more. This is my Q. Now I'm going to compare my Q to my K. My K was 0 0.036. My Q was 64.0. Q is much greater than my K. So that means we have so much product because it's products of a reactant. We want to remove it by shifting to the reactant side. Pause the video, try this problem on your own, and then check your answer.
we have 0 0.035 moles of SO2, 0.5 moles of SO2Cl2, 0 0 0.080 moles of Cl2, and they're placed in a 5.00 liter flask. Which way will the reaction proceed? This is a reaction quotient because it asks you to find the shift in the reaction, and then it provided all the concentration of the products and the reactants. So you want to start off by writing the equation. So Q is equal to products over reactants. My products are SO2 times CO2 over the reactant, which is SO2Cl2. All the powers are 1 because the coefficients are 1 of the balance equation. Plugging in, we have SO2, there's 0 0.035 moles per 5.00 liters. For the Cl2, there is 0 0.080 moles per 5.00 liters. And my reactant, we have 0 0.500 moles per 5.00 liter. So solving for Q, we get 0 0.011 with correct sig figs. We're going to compare Q to K. K was given as 0 0.078. Q we solved at 0 0.011 so Q is less than K since Q is less than K that means we have more reactants because Q is product over reactants so we have more reactants so we must shift towards the product to reach equilibrium pause the video try this problem on your own and then check your answer for the following reaction BR2 plus Cl2 yields 2BrCl. The given Kc is 7.1. The concentrations given for Br2Cl2, BrCl2 is given as is. Determine Q. So my Q reaction again is going to be products over reactants. So BrCl squared over Br2 times Cl2. Then we're going to plug in the numbers. BrCl is given as 1.4 times 10 to the negative 2 molar. We're going to square that. Br2 is given as 2.3 times 10 to the negative 3rd molar. And Cl2 is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 3rd molar. 7.1 for your Q. And now we need to compare Q to K. So Q is 7.1. K is 7.1. So these are equal, so this is at equilibrium, so there will be no shift. You solve for Q to determine which way an equation will shift to establish equilibrium. Two clues that you are solving for reaction quotient is it will ask you to determine the shift and the concentrations for all the products and reactants will be provided. You write the equation for Q just the way you did for equilibrium constant, products over reactants. Plug your values in, solve, and compare to Q and K. If Q is greater than K, it will shift towards the reactants or the left. When they are equal, they are at equilibrium. If Q is less than K, it will shift to the product. You can always determine it by comparing the products and the reactants. Qs will never have an ice table. Equilibrium constants can be manipulated. If I have a 4 reaction and for that same reaction I have a reverse reaction, the K for the reverse reaction, Kc prime, is the reciprocal of the 4 reaction. So we have a going to B in the forward direction. So if I write my KC equation, it is products over reactants, so concentration of B over concentration of A. In the same reaction, if I make B my reactants and it's going in the reverse direction, my new KC prime is products over reactant in which A is my products divided by my reactants which is B. If I look at both of my re equation they are reciprocals of each other. Since the equation is reciprocal of each other the new Kc prime in the reverse direction is equal to 1 over Kc of the forward direction. When a equation is multiplied by a factor that factor becomes a power of the K or the exponent of the K. 
If I have an original equation a plus b equals c, my k equation becomes c in bracket, a in bracket, b in bracket, and that is my k. If I multiply the same equation by a factor of 4, and I write my k equation, my c is to the power of the 4, my a is to the power of 4, and my b is to the power of 4, because the coefficient of the balanced re reaction becomes the exponent in the equilibrium expression. So what we ultimately did was we multiply each reactant and product by 4. Therefore, my equilibrium constant must be k to the fourth power. If I divide the same equation by a half, my k equation becomes c to the brackets to 1 half divided by a to the bracket 1 half and b to the bracket 1 half. Just like the previous one, the new k will be to the 1 half because the coefficients were all divided by a factor of 1 half. If we have a series of equation and we add them using Hess's law. The overall equation will have a new equilibrium constant and the equilibrium constant will be the multiplication all the individual reactions. So here I have the dissociation of phosphoric acid. It loses one hydrogen each time. So when I lose my first hydrogen atom, my Ka1 is 6.9 times 10 to the negative 3. As I lose my second one, it becomes 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8. And my third one, Ka3, is 4.8 times 10 to the negative 13. If I add this equation, the H2PO4 minus will cancel out on opposite side, and so will the HPO4 2 minus will also cancel out. So my overall reaction becomes H3PO4AQ PO4 3 minus AQ plus 3H plus AQ because phosphoric acid has the ability to lose at least 3 hydrogen ions. To calculate the equilibrium constant for this overall reaction, we take the individual case from its individual equations and multiply it. The Kc for phosphoric acid is 2.05 times 10 to the negative 22. Given the following two equations, 1 and 2, as well as their respective K1 and K2, determine the equilibrium constant for the following reactions. So if I look at A, and I look at my equation above, we know that the second equation stayed as is because we need NO2 in the product side. So I'm going to rewrite my equation. Oxygen is not present in the overall reaction. Therefore, the first equation must be flipped to cancel out. So when I add the overall equation, the O2s cancel out. This is 4NO yields N2 plus 2NO2. So this is my overall reaction. So my K for the reaction is the first reaction reaction was reversed, so we have to take the reciprocal. The second equation was as is, so we just leave it as is. Now I plug in my numbers, 1 over 4.3 times 10 to the negative 25th times 6.4 times 10 to the 9th, answer of 1.5 times 10 to the 34th. For B, we know the second equation was flipped because the NO2 is now on the reactant side. So if I flip that, that's going to be 2NO2, 2NO plus O2. The oxygens do not cancel out this time, so that means they must be on the same side. Since the second equation was reversed, the first equation has to be reversed to keep the oxygen on the same side. Equation 1 is going to be 2NO, N2 plus O2. Now I'm going to determine the overall reaction. The 2NOs cancel out, so my overall reaction is 2NO. O2 yields N2 plus 2O2. But if I look at my equation here, it is double what I have. That means this entire thing was multiplied by a factor of 2. So now I'm going to calculate 
my k so my k constant my first one was reverse so that's 1 over k1 my second equation was reverse which was 1 over k2 and then the entire reaction was multiplied by a factor of 2 so that means the entire thing has to be to the second power because coefficient becomes exponent so if I plug this in we will get 1 over 4.2 3 times 10 to the negative 25th times 1 over 6.4 times 10 to the 9th. After you multiply that, you're going to square it and you're going to get 1.3 times 10 to the 29th. So for part C, we know that the second equation was flipped because the NO2 is now on the reactant side. So I know I have to flip the second equation. The first equation is also flipped because we have to add the oxygens. The oxygen appears on the same side and also the product NO is on the reactant side. If I add the overall equation, I know my answer is wrong because the two NOs here and the two NOs down here, they cancel out. But I need two NOs in my overall equation. To get that, I need to multiply the top equation by 2 because the 2 NO2 appears on the reactant side. When I multiply by 2, I multiply the entire reaction by 2 and so now it becomes 4, 2, 2. Now I could cancel out. So 2 cancels out with entire here. This becomes 2 NO yields 2 NO plus now there's 3 O2 and this is what my equation given looks like. So this is my overall equation. So now my KC, the first equation, I took the reciprocal and I also multiplied by a factor of two. So that means I have to square that. And the bottom one, I just reversed it. So I'm only taking the reciprocal, one over K2. Plugging in the numbers, I'm gonna get one over 4.3 times 10 to the negative 25th, square it, multiply by 1 over 6.4 times 10 to the 9th, and this will equal to 8.5 times 10 to the 38th. So when you are manipulating equilibrium expression, the overall equation is written by adding all the individual equations together using Hess's law. Afterwards, you need to determine, was my equation flipped? If my re equation is in the reverse direction, I take the reciprocal. Is my equation multiplied by a factor? If I do that, that factor becomes the exponent. Lastly, using Hess's law, all the equations added, the k constants are multiplied.